So hello everyone, <coughs> namaste, and a happy morning to all of you. So at the outset, I would really like to thank everyone for this opportunity. And also, I would like to take a moment to express my gratitude to all those people who have been instrumental in molding my life and make me the person that I am standing in front of you today here. I'm a practicing neuroradiologist in a multi-speciality hospital in Mumbai. And as I begin, friends, I have two very important basic questions to ask. Uh, I don't expect an answer, but you can contemplate over it. The first question, friends, is that, you know, we are constantly acting, working from morning to night, isn't it? Days, weeks, years, and with all the actions that we do towards whatever that we are doing, towards our passions, towards our goal, towards our relationships, our jobs. The question is, why is it that we are working? What is the purpose behind them? What is the purpose behind our work? Have you ever thought of that? What it could be? Just a few answers. What it could be? Why are you working? So, you know, if you boil down to come to a conclusion, eventually you will realize that whatever that I want to achieve, it could be name, power, fame, money, eventually I want to experience happiness. Isn't it? Very simple. I want to experience that complete happiness in my life. But then my next more relevant question attached to this is that, have you experienced that complete happiness? Are you able to experience that complete happiness? Question is, why is it that we are not able to experience that happiness? And how is it that I will be able to experience that complete happiness? Yes. To a certain degree, when I get the object of my desire, whatever that my goal is, or the person whom I'm looking for in a relationship, you chase, you experience happiness for some time. It is temporary, isn't it? We all experience that, but after some time, we are back to square one. We are there again for another chase. And life goes on like this. But if I tell you today, that there is a possibility for you to experience, for all of us to experience, that complete, everlasting happiness. There is a backing by science and spirituality. There is a science behind happiness. Would you like to explore this with me, to know more about? Yes? So, you know, for me personally, it was an amazing eureka moment when I discovered this. And as a neuroradiologist, when I saw the actual, through the you know, functional MRI, the latest inventions, where you can actually show it what happens in your brain, in your neuropsychology, when you experience that pure, everlasting happiness, there is something happens inside you, you document that, was a huge achievement. And I have two scientific research which, from our hospital, we have published it. And I will show you soon what these are. But before I go into this, I would like you to come for a journey back to my childhood. What are the events which led me to this discovery? So just to tell you in brief, you know, I have had a childhood where things were not easy. Even for the very basic necessities, there always has been a struggle. I remember one incident which left a deep impression. I was in my seventh grade, and I topped my class. And you know what happens when you top the class, you go and share, right? So I shared with my parents, family, my uh, other relatives. And my father, out of complete love, he gifted me a Cadbury chocolate. So I was so happy about it. The next day in the school, I shared it with my best friend, that my father gave me a Cadbury chocolate. That moment, my best friend, with a very disgusting look, said, you know what, in my home, there is always a Cadbury chocolate box lying all the time in the refrigerator. That, you know, made me feel very small. And I realized at that moment that we didn't even have a refrigerator back home. But this does not, did not dissuade me. I then started working hard towards getting objects which will give me happiness. 
And I, with full passion, which is how the family brought me up, with full focus, studied, cleared my 10th grade, 12th grade, got a seat in a reputed medical college through Merit List in Mumbai, and I started my medical education. And I thought, this is it. Now that I have got things, and being a doctor, I will be able to treat patients, resolve their suffering. I'm done. But then, you know, uh, many of you are students here, when you move out from your confines of your home into the world outside, and as you mature, what you get? You get an awareness, you see the world around. And I saw that people are just not happy. There are people who are affluent with so many things, but yet there is something going wrong in the family, discordant relationships. In my own circle, I saw couples who have been together for many years suddenly breaking up, divorces happening, and there were some who were struggling with very basic things, just could not make the ends meet. I was completely confused and found myself helpless that how is it that one can seek that happiness, that everlasting happiness? Now, in this journey, during that same medical school, I had another part where I got gravitated towards spirituality, towards the world of Vedanta, Vedic scriptures. You know, just like uh, if you know how medical students study, it's like you have to be a bookworm to study the uh, medical books. I studied the Vedic text equally as I studied my medical books, and I put my heart and soul, and with the help of my teachers, I suddenly realized that there is a way in our scriptures, ancient scriptures, which describe how you can experience that happiness. Vedanta gives you a mirror to your life. It helps you to see who you are, your core, your source. But then, friends, there was a discord. I was a doctor, a scientific person, which my mindset was set in proofs, evidences, whereas spirituality is an inner experience, transcendental, not tangible. How do you get proofs and results? But then, friends, I had amazing mentors and guides. Now, your friends, I would like you all to come to something very important, basic thing about life. So, you know, let me take, give you an example. You all have a smartphone, right? You could be having an iPhone, Samsung Galaxy, Google Pixel, whichever phone do you have. Now, when you buy this phone, do you just buy it like that? What do you do? You actually want to know what this phone is about, isn't it? You will try to look at its functions, how it will help you. Right? We all do that. But then, friends, most important thing is the intricate creation of this human body, such amazingly designed, the most fabulous creation, isn't it? Our human body. How much do we know about it? Unfortunately, this is not even taught in our education. And this is where lies the spirituality. I will give you a simple example. You know, just a two-second experiment. Everyone, please close your eyes, just for two seconds, and think of the person you most love. Okay, I'm repeating again, just close your eyes, and think of the person you love the most. And now, you can open your eyes. You know, I can, <laughs> as you open the eyes, I can see a smile in the face of so, much, so many people. This experience of that love, where did it come from? You know, we think that we are only this human body. In science, we go further, where we are taught about our senses to see, hear, taste, touch, smell, right? And the mind which controls the senses, the mind which helps us to think and act, right? But beyond this, nothing more. But then this experience which you just got of love, it is somewhere very deep-seated in your core, in your heart. And this is the answer that your source is within you. Whatever that you may believe, that power is within you. And here comes what can be done about it. Very interestingly, if you see the last 100, 200 years, science has invented so many things. You know, with a microscope, we have seen the tiniest cell, isn't it? And with the help of telescope, we have reached galaxies. Such an amazing news yesterday, Chandrayaan-3, right? Got launched. And August 3, it will land up on the moon. What an amazing, proud feeling. But then, has science discovered this inner world? 
is the question. So, fortunately for us, friends, I think this many people do not know. In last 10 to 20 years, a lot of research is being done on various techniques which are spiritually backed as to what happens in our body, in our mind, in our psyche when we experience these processes, spiritual processes. And one similar such spiritual process, which is a transformative energy transfer process, as you can see in the slide, Maitri Shakti Prabha, is the one which was devised by Maitre Radhashriji, who is also a medical doctor and a global humanitarian. As you can see that this particular energy transfer process, it's a very deep spiritual process. It has many benefits, but one of the important thing is that it awakens that core, that experience of love which you just experienced. It helps in experiencing your core. And when we experienced this in 2012-13, when this process was out, a lot of people experience a transformation in their life. So as a medical team, we thought we'll come together and do a research. So what we did in this is that we tried to study this by doing three different kind of studies to document what happens when you connect to your core. So we had two groups. One group experienced this intervention of Shakti Prabha, and the other group experienced that uh, they did something else as a control, you know, the standard uh, research which happens. This was initially a pilot study. And what we found, so one of the tests which we did, as I'm going to show you now, is called as resting state functional MRI. You know, quickly I'll just tell you in a few seconds what this means. You know, right now, every one of you is listening to me. I hope everyone is listening to me here. <laughs> so when you are actively listening, what happens? There is a network in the brain called as task positive network, TPN, which gets activated. Now, if I tell you that this session is over, you can chill, you can relax, you can just introspect, nothing for you to do. In that idle time, when you're ruminating, there is a network called as default mode network, which gets activated. Now, this is a huge amount of research is being done on default mode network because the way the default mode network is, it has different areas which are all interconnected decides whether you're a normal person, whether you have Alzheimer's disease, whether you have mental health disorders. A lot of research is being done now. So when we did this in the participants, comparing from before and after, there is an area in the brain which is called as the precuneus. As you can see, it got increased connection. And we didn't know what this precuneus is about. So we went and did a search what other articles and research are telling, and to our surprise, we found that this is the seat of meta-consciousness, of awareness. It is the hub of the entire default mode network. It is also called as the mind side. It's the emotional center. To my surprise, you know, while I was preparing for this session today, I tried to see what new discovery has been done about precuneus, and the morphometry of the left precuneus is directly correlated with eudaimonic well-being, which is the theme for this session. So amazing. And exactly this left precuneus, we found increased connectivity through the uh, process that we used. Also, we did SPECT brain perfusion, single photon emission computerized tomography. So as you can see before, the front area in the brain has got more yellow color. Right? It's very obvious. And afterwards, the red color increased. You all can see this difference? Now, this difference what you are seeing, the red color increasing, means there is increased oxygenation, increased blood circulation in the frontal lobes. And as we all know, as human beings, the frontal lobes are very important for higher function, for cognition, for doing all the you know, higher things that we are doing compared to animals. And on neuropsychology, we found a huge number of benefits. Some of them are listed here. Your cognition improved. There was an emotional stability, better decision making. You know, friends, it's so important that you need to take good decisions. Our life is full about choices, isn't it? Every moment we make choices, and we repent on our decisions at night. How to make better decisions? This process helped. This is what we found through our neuropsychological testing. Quick mental faculties and overall more joyful state of being. Now, after having done this initial research, which is published in IJMR, as you can see, a journal which is authenticated, validated, indexed journal, 
During the COVID time, we took the same research, because it was a pilot study initially, the Maitri Shakti Prava, how it is helping in a larger participants. So in this, the next research, we incorporated 420 participants who experienced this process. And what we found, we just did a simple emotional mental health uh, well-being scale, which is called as the Warwick, Bobbick, Edinburgh Mental Well-Being Scale, as it is shown here. And we found that after 21 days of experiencing this process, participants' energy levels, their self-confidence, feeling, feeling of you know, self-worth, loved, connecting to others, the kinship, all that improved drastically. And you know, we all know that these things, to have self-confidence, to have good energy levels is so important, isn't it, to function in the world. So friends, this is something that I would like to conclude, that this is the science behind happiness. There is something which possibly science will discover and come out more and more. When you experience your core, your source, as we saw through the research, there are changes which happen in your brain, which are for your good. There are changes which make you a better person and a more joyful person. Very importantly, friends, when you connect to your own core, what you will realize is that there is an experience of transformation. You will realize that this core, the source, what you are experiencing is also the same in another person, in everywhere around, even in plants, animals, because you connect to that source. Just like you know, electricity remaining the same in a refrigerator, it cools, and in a microwave, it heats. But electricity remains the same, isn't it? So also, this source, which is enabling us to breathe, to hear, to see, to function, that source always remains the same. And when you experience that core, that source, you will find that all of us are one. We are all connected. This is eudaimonia, isn't it? This is well-being, where we all come together as one world and one family. So friends, to conclude, I thank you for your attention, and I wish that all of you experience this process which we describe, or you can take up many other similar meditative sessions which are there, processes are there, out. You can experience that. Connect to your core, whichever way that you can. And when you connect to your source, the world will change for you. And you will experience that everlasting happiness. This is the science behind happiness. And I really wish every one of you experience this happiness. Thank you so much.